Hey folks, um, this is Jandabear. Welcome back to my guide in Ion. Um, this is for Battle Metal Farming. In my first video, I covered where you can buy the Battle Metal gear, or the Strife gear as it's known as, um, and also where you could upgrade it, boost it, and uh, whatnot. So go check that out if you haven't, or if you're not sure where to actually get a hold of this gear. In this guide, I'll be showing you where you can actually farm the Battle Metals, or at least the most efficient locations to farm it. There is plenty of locations in the game where you can actually earn the battle medals, but these, in my opinion, are the fastest. Okay, so I'm already out here in Acheron. Um, I've marked my map to show you the way these camps work that you take over. Each of these camps you take over, or at least most of them, will give you a quest to kill mobs in the local area. Now you see these red ones I've circled, these are the three northern uh, guard outposts. Um, taking over all of them will cause um, certain quest mobs to appear otherwise not all the quest mobs you need to kill will appear um, and and doing that will allow them all to appear you can finish your quest hand it in um, so all of these ones around the sides they're all kind of linked as the north south east west camps now the one in the middle here tiamat's basin that one also has its own uh, quest the quest there for completing it gives you uh, 10 battle medals, and uh, but it's quite a hard, difficult base to take over. Um, unless you go to a party or a couple of good DPS and a couple of good healers, you're not going to be taking over it, and that's provided Asmos don't show up. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start off by showing you how to take over one of these camps. And um, and show you the quest that the camp gives as well, and how many battle medals you can earn. Uh, often, when you jump off the ledge here, you will come across Asmos, as we did here, this assassin. For anybody wanting to know, is the strife gear worth it to get uh, PVP damage-wise and things? Well, you can see my damage against this PVP geared assassin. Um, that's P the strife accessories and the strife greatsword. So the damage isn't too bad. I mean, obviously at this point my stats have uh, still to improve, and I'm still looking to get a uh, better combine for my greatsword. But this assassin's uh, a slippery one; it gets away. Okay, so heading back to the camp that we're going to take over now. So the first camp, or the nearest one, is uh, just up here. Now you don't need to clear the whole camp out, you just need to kill the captain. That's the guy I'm about to mark with a skull. The legate. Okay, so you just need to kill him and automatically all the remaining mobs uh, will disappear as well. Now he does just look like a typical 65 uh, 4 dot mob, but he has a lot more HP than that, as you can see. So don't be uh, misled. I have taken over this camp solo before on Templar. And in order to do so, I cleared the first couple of mobs that would normally aggro. And then I just uh, fought the captain guy where he was. I needed to use uh, potions. Other than that, most of my heals came from cool burns, the remove shock skill. Nothing difficult, doesn't hit hard. Just a lot of HP. with other people I recommend just doing as I did here which is ignore the other mobs just focus on the captain alone if you're gonna take over it alone yourself then I definitely recommend cleaning a couple of them they're a lot weaker they don't have nearly his level of health There's a lot of knockdowns, unfortunately. I wasted on route and devotion earlier chasing the assassin. So at this point, I notice my uh, pet's alarm going off, which means the opportunist is back. There he is over there. 
So rather than continuing to fight and uh, making ourselves vulnerable, I decide to just reset the captain. And he does reset, unfortunately, if you take him out of the camp. The rest of the mobs, not so easily. So as soon as he takes a few hits from me, the assassin decides to run off. I see he used uh, Windwalk as DP skill to go into height. Because he really didn't want to to stay in fight. This Cleopatra um, bard here, as you can see, is in level 56 Devonian, a returning player clearly. You get that given to you if you've been away from Iron for a certain length of time. Um, it's got set bonuses, but you can't socket any mana stones in it, nor can you enchant it. Okay, so back to killing this uh, captain guy who the gate. The bard is helping as well, it seems. And that is a, a point I should mention, actually. Um, the bard is trying to jump straight from the 56 um, Devonian set that you get given for returning into the 65 eternal pvp stuff and uh, it is actually that easy to get this stuff and uh, very quick by comparison to um, ap gears so i would recommend it to to most people actually pulling him back into where he starts off from because this guy resets very easily. If you take him more than 5-6 meters from where he um, starts off, he will reset. At this point, I notice another Asma coming in. Rather than shade run over to them, I decide to finish the captain off since he's almost dead and I don't want to reset him again. Okay, so turn for is a chanter this time. They failed to zerg down that new player. So now they're running for it. And the assassin takes uh, this opportunity to come out of hide as well. He's attacking Shiva. I throw bodyguard on her. He realizes this. He stops attacking. And then he kills the other poor bard I was speaking about earlier. He's in the newbie Devonian gears. But anyone who's PvP geared, of course, he doesn't want to stay in fight. Why would he? Especially when there's two of them, two of us. So this chanter's feeling great. The chanter comes back. He doesn't do very well for it. So that quest you saw there, um, killing two Asmos and Acheron, that's a daily as far as I'm aware. Right, so I've already actually got this quest from uh, from this camp. I'll just uh, bring up my quest log and show you. Okay, so this is the northern supply base. So there'll be two quests for this camp here. There will be a uh, defend the north and attack in the north as well. That's um, these quests here you can see. I'll flag them.
So kill five mobs, get five battle medals. Very simple, easy quest. So a different bard here is attacking the mobs I see that we're also needing. So we team up so we're not competing for mobs. Now, returning players to Ion will notice then um, any quest you have, um, the mobs will have this blue marker next to them. It just makes it a lot easier for the old days to know which uh, qu uh, qu quest mobs you need to kill. I know a lot of other games have that as well, and uh, Ion decided to finally add something like that. Even if you don't have the quest flagged at the site, you will see um, the blue marker next to any mob that you already have a quest in your logs for. So that's the second quest, attacking the north, the other ones defend the, defend the north. Well, very rarely and randomly these mobs can also drop uh, one or two ancient coins uh, each as well. Ancient coin gear is a whole different set of gear, uh, some of you probably know about it. That gear is designed uh, mostly for PvE there, with some very basic PvP defense on it, but nothing compared to Strife. This thing next to me, this big blue pillar-like thing, is a kind of defense statue. You can go stand next to it if you feel you're uh, about to be attacked by a nearby Asmo. It will, it will shoot out a kind of big bolt of uh, electricity at them, dealing a lot of damage, like 10k plus. So it can uh, one or two shot most people. So Asmo Log is uh, moving again, so someone's nearby. That would be the Chanter from earlier. Looks like he killed someone. You can't attack that now. You can't attack that far away. Feet of restraint. So yeah, you can see the damage this gear deals um, in PvP. It's quite nice. For me, it's uh, preferable to having to grind out millions of AP or uh, medals and things. That that's for me is a kind of a more long-term thing that I do. Because I'm not playing this game 24-7. I know some people are and it's easy for them to farm AP all day long. I don't have that kind of time, unfortunately. So the battle medal gear is uh, a very welcome addition for, for people in my position. So once that's done, Andy's quest in here. Five nice better medals for that one. Another five for that one. Nice day, isn't it? And this one where we killed two Asmos, that's uh, daily as far as I'm aware. And um, five better medals for that one as well. And you can hand that in where you first zone in to Acheron. Okay, that's all it for Acheron. Next I'll be showing the garrisons in Rishanta. Okay, I'm in Rishanta now, and now I'll be showing you where you can earn battle medals here. 
So all of these garrisons, there's a lot of them, will give you two quests once taken over. Each one of the quests will give you a pouch which has a random amount of battle medals in it. Now they tend to average around about, at least for me, about six of them. So I'm showing you that you can also take over these artifacts as well. That's the three on the outside and the one in the center as well. They, they will also give you um, two quests each that give you battle medal pouches. Alright, the first thing I'm going to show you is um, taking over an artifact. You don't need to fight all the mobs. Right, that one there, uh, the high rank in 57th uh, Protector, he's the one we're interested in. Now you can only do what uh, I'm doing here if you've got uh, enough healing support and DPS to burn them down. Otherwise the mobs can hit close hard. Ignore everything else, if you can. And, uh, then just continue to zerg him down. Once he's dead, all the other mobs despawn and our guys will uh, take over instead. So the quest NPC tends to spawn at the opposite side from where the protector uh, was, as um, I've noticed. Takes, um, takes a few seconds. So there it is from Bokai. Now remember you can do this with every artifact in the upper abyss. So two quests. Each one given this uh, bundle of battle medals. If you flag them you will know where to go. Now the mobs will spawn here. Sometimes the mobs have already instantly spawned. Other times you need to go there. Just wait half a minute uh, or so thereabouts and the mobs will spawn. These mobs uh, have a very long uh, respawn time, so if you can't team up with other people like I have, because they were going to do it anyway, and um, there's only a certain number of spawns, and the respawns I've noticed can be as long as half an hour and more. So just kill these mobs, you only need to kill five. Very easy, very quick. And in case anyone is wondering, this uh, quest does not update in an alliance, so unfortunately you can only do it in a party at most. If you go in an alliance, the quest will not update. So you can see how quick and easy it is to just kill these five mobs, especially in a group. They barely last a handful of seconds each. So once that's done, go to the next point. And if the quests are flagged on the side of your screen, you will know exactly where to go. So now these are Asmodian type mobs. They have red names and so on. And as you can see, they do actually have a little bit more health than the Galore do. You can't really tell by looking at them how many dots they are. Uh, the Galore were only one dot each. These I'm gonna guess are about maybe two or three. Now sometimes if you run out of mobs for whatever reason, there will be some in uh, hide as well. So just uh, be aware of that. Again, just like the other ones, these have a very long respawn time. If you do want to do this with a friend, um, basically anyone that can uh, support heal, bard, chanter, um, can heal even you know, any DPS on these whatsoever. I do this on my assassin with a bard uh, as a uh, chanter duo uh, quite frequently when I can't recruit people. These are weekly, so you can only do them once a week, which is perhaps just as well, um, at least for me, because I couldn't do every single one in the abyss. I just wouldn't have the time for it to do that every single day. So it was as easy as that. Now we go hand in the two quests. Get our bundles. One is a normal, the other one says it's a large. Okay, now I'm going to be showing you um, a garrison takeover. 
pretty much like the artifact takeover except they tend to be on these uh, floating islands or sometimes um, on one of the larger islands. Now when the Blur overtake this from either Elios again, which happens automatically over time, or from uh, Asmos, the captain isn't the, the one that you need to kill to overtake it. He isn't the first to spawn. Um, he takes about 5 minutes, so I've already kind of shown the video from the time that he's going to spawn. Again, you can just ignore everything and charge in. And you really do need to fight him where he stands. This one is uh, very finicky. If you pull him more than a few meters, he will reset very easily and constantly. And then just re aggro run over to you, reset again and again. So you need to fight him pretty much where he stands. Once you take over, your NPCs will spawn, along with the one that will give you the quest. Area Luma, friend. As you can see here. Area Luma, friend. Now, it does give two quests. I initially thought, because uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I, I've only had time to, to do a little bit or something, or we've had competition and we've had to come back later, so you, uh, you can forget which where you are and then things. Um, so I'm getting someone else to kind of lead to where the secondary mobs might be. I'd forgotten whether at this point if I had completed it or if uh, I just have the quest sitting in my log somewhere. So I'm just checking. So this is the 64th. I do have the other 64th one. As you can see there, I got 3 out of 5 because um, when I was doing it last, um, I had competition. So didn't get all the kills and I don't think they did either so if you can team up with people do so. The mobs will spawn after a little bit when you get there. They are on very long respawns. That's one thing I wish they would change actually. Either put more mobs down for more people or increase their respawns which I think would be preferable. That's those five mobs done. I'm gonna move to the other side. Just like the uh, artifacts, one batch of mob will be below, the other batch will be as modium. Both for the um, artifacts and for um, these, uh, these other garrisons as well. I have um, taken over them with a chanter on heels on my assassin. Other duos can probably do it as well. Um, you just need to have a lot of high burst damage to take out the captain mobs. Um, on assassin, I will usually um, increase my magical accuracy via buffs and then blind all the surrounding mobs and then just focus on the captain. On Templar, just shove up Iron Skin or whatever defensive skills you have. So it really is as uh, as easy as that. Hail Deva. And in your two quests, get your two bundles. Well, that's it for this video. I hope somebody finds it useful and go get yourself some strife gear. Very easy, very quick. And thanks for watching.